Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Hello and welcome to the next episode of Ilm Suite. Uh, in this episode, we'll be speaking about something very important, something that will happen to all of us, something that concerns all of us. And have you ever thought about dying and what will happen to you when you die? Yes, but what happens to the people you leave behind and what you leave behind when you die? So in this episode, we're going to be speaking about uh, inheritance and, and wills. And it's something that is neglected uh, in our community, but it is of utmost importance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has issued a severe warning for those who do not follow the guidelines that have been set out in the Quran. So I had to give you some background. Uh, in the early days of Islam, it was obligatory upon Muslims too to write a will. Okay, and there are hadith, uh, a hadith in the Sahih, in the narrations, uh, which mentions severe punishment for those who do not leave a will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, and this is one of the abrogated verses of the Quran, mentions that uh, it has been prescribed that if any one of you pass away, in taraka khayran al wasiyatu lil walidayni wal aqrabin. If he leaves any wealth behind, that he must write a will to his parents and to his close relatives. All of that is abrogated now. Okay, so that, that verse, that command that was in uh, the Quran was abrogated later on by the verses in Surah Al Nisa. So in Surah Al Nisa, verse 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions inna ladina ya'kuluna amwala yatama zulman inna ma ya'kuluna fi butunihim nara wa sayaslawna sa'ira and then verse 11 yusikum allahu fi awladikum lidhakari mithu hazil unfayin and so on to the end of the verse the next verse and one final verse which is about kalala at the end of surah al-nisa right, so what happened Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or stipulated who gets what from a person's relatives when they pass away. So they abolish the practice of, of writing a will uh, and everything is cleared up in those verses of the Quran and it's not for anybody to change this. Nobody can come along and decide I want to give uh, you know all of my wealth to my eldest son for example. So sadly in our community uh, sometimes what has happened the person just before they, they pass away just before they're about to meet their creator they say i'm going to give all my wealth to my eldest son for example and prevent uh, the other inheritors out of their rightful wealth and inheritance which is prohibited and you know the, the verses in the quran if we translate them it mentions that those who consume the wealth of orphans, okay, why the wealth of orphans? Uh, the Quraysh, uh, the Jahili Arabs, what they would do is when they would inherit an orphan, they would inherit their wealth as well. And they would use the wealth that was left with those orphans uh, unjustly, they would take it without right and they would use that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yakuluna which literally means to to eat to consume because the main thing that you do with wealth is that you buy food with it okay so yakuluna literally means that they eat okay but it means to consume to use up the wealth of orphans so likewise you know those who take any wealth unjustly from a rightful inheritor they will come under this verse and it is considered as unlawful wealth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in reality they're only consuming fire into their stomachs they're only consuming fire into their stomachs Allah says and the roast in a blaze then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of the most beautiful language he says you see come Allah fi and it, you know this is a play on words in the Quran 
because the word awsa you see in Arabic it means to leave a bequest it means to to write a will okay but here in, in the verse it also means that to give advice to somebody to give a direction to somebody I to give a command to somebody okay so you give a command to somebody I to distribute your wealth in this manner and this is the same word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using it's you see come the wasiya is your bequest is your will so Allah says you see come Allah fi ulad Allah instructs you concerning your children and so on then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here lays out all of the categories of uh, the inheritors so what is the problem that we are facing one is ignorance in our community that you know maybe they don't know that these rules exist even or may, maybe it, it's greed they know they exist but it's greed or sometimes culture it gets in the way uh, especially the inheritance of females uh, there are cultural issues as well uh, so it's important that you know we, we do uh, create wills especially in the UK if we're living in the UK uh, in particular maybe other Western countries as well uh, even in Muslim countries to, to some extent too uh, but le lesser so but if you die without a will in the UK then the UK law will say who gets what so it's incumbent upon every sane adult Muslim living in the UK to have a will okay and with that will they will uh, appoint a trustee or an executor of the will who will implement the will according to the Sharia will implement that will according to the Sharia okay so we can't tamper with these rules that are in the, the Quran and there are things to re remember uh, when doing this in the, in the UK it must be in writing the will so it can't be verbally even though that would be fine Islamically but in the UK the will must be in writing and it must be made by you after the age of 18 and with a sound mind and it has to have the presence of two witnesses okay and it needs to be signed by those witnesses but the witnesses they can't be uh, people who are included in the will as well so you, you should make that keep it in a safe place make a photocopy of it okay and if you need to update it or change it you can do what they call a codicil okay it's just an official alteration uh, that you make and then you, you just just sign it uh, and to say that you've, you've made a change uh, that's fine so the, there are a lot of issues to take into account for most cases you don't need a solicitor there's no legal requirement that a solicitor prepares your will uh, for most cases it's straightforward uh, however if there are a lot of complex issues involved then it's better to consult a solicitor okay uh, for example you might share property with somebody who isn't your partner uh, you might uh, have a lot of family members like a different second wife or different children from one of a marriage for example that might make a claim on that will uh, you might have a home that is outside of the UK or property overseas or businesses and so on and there's also the issue of inheritance tax as well if your estate is worth more than 325,000 pounds then there is an inheritance tax as well that can be uh, avoided by leaving uh, everything to your your spouse okay uh, so if you leave it to your spouse even if it's over the threshold there will be no inheritance tax so complex issues you can go to a solicitor for uh, but there is you know some general guidelines that we need to adhere to as well I've created my own will uh, according to uh, Islamic law and according to UK law as well and it has things in there that uh, many solicitors you know they may, may overlook uh, 
So it mentions a bequest to be buried in a Muslim graveyard, to have a proper ghusl, uh, not to perform an autopsy, uh, and, and so on, not to be cremated, etc. And there's also sections on, you know, miss prayers or misfas or kafarat, uh, hajj maybe that the person wanted to do, they weren't able to do, it, and so on. Uh, and the general advice as well. So this general guidelines concerning Islamic inheritance that every last item of the deceased wealth, even the smallest needle and thread, they have to be divided up and distributed between the inheritors. Okay, if it's not possible to do that, either those items are sold and then the money will be divided between them. And then after returning any trusts and deposits to the rightful owners, I then, the first thing we look at are funeral and burial costs. So washing, the shrouding, transportation, the burial place. Okay, we're going to take that out of the wealth of the deceased without being extravagant or stingy. Uh, then we're going to look at debts. Okay, and all of those debts will be paid off equally once all the debts are paid off. We can look at uh, wills and bequests. So the will, obviously the inheritance laws are in the Quran. So a man came to the Prophet ﷺ, his name was Ibn Afra. And he said, can I, you know, bequest all of my wealth? Can I leave all of my wealth in a will? Meaning his inheritors won't get yet anything. And the Messenger of Allah said, no. And he said, can I leave half of it in the will? And the Messenger of Allah said, no. Then he said, what about a third? And the Messenger of Allah said, فَالثُلُثْ وَالثُلُثُ كَثِيرٌ Okay, a third then. But a third is a lot. And then the Messenger of Allah said, if, if you, it's better that you leave your inheritors wealthy rather than leaving them poor in a state where they have to go and beg from people you know and all of that is is a charity for the person as well okay even the morsel that he lifts up to place in the mouth of his wife that is a charity for that person therefore a will is permitted but it can only be taken from a third of the remaining wealth after funeral and burial costs after debts okay unless all the inheritors they agree to permit that that will if it's more than a third you know that's them an act of charity for them and then the last thing is inheritance so the inheritors must be given their shares as stipulated by the sharia okay and what i'm working on now is uh, a presentation about one hour or two hour presentation where we can deliver this information to, to the masses. Uh, and if you're interested in this, then please do get in touch with us at Il Suite or on my own website, marifatessentials.com. And we will come and deliver a presentation in your community center, in your local masjid or whatever to raise awareness of this issue because we've seen so many arguments that are caused uh, because, of, because of this issue uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already clarified everything for us in the Quran and my teachers you know they used to say that the Christians would come to us because they don't have any system in place it's a blessing that we have such a, an amazing system of inheritance in place and our teachers would say that Christians would come to us when they would get stuck and they, they would say, go to the Muslims because they have a clear system of uh, guidance when it comes to, to inheritance loss. Uh, so it, it's a great blessing uh, that we've got that. Uh, it will end any type of disputes. And like we said in the UK, I, it's it's very, very important that we we do this. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.